Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Just want to let you know that you can find all the info for paint mixing ratios, paint brands, and colors in the info. So check that out. So I'm starting with my base color. This looks pretty black, but it's actually a mixture of 50% black and 50% silver. Once you've got your base layer down in a thin, even coat, on a separate surface, start laying out your colors for your rainbow chain pull. I'm starting with magenta, then copper, gold, green, metallic green, turquoise, and dioxazine purple. So I've got a little, rough little Roy G. Biv sort of variation there. And then we're just going to repeat those colors. Now you want to pay attention to how long you're making this part because this is going to determine part of the length of your feather. You also want to keep in mind that your feather is going to be considerably longer than the length of color that you lay down here. So keep that in mind as well because the top part of your feather where it starts to curve in is going to be on top of this length as well as the base part of your feather or the quill. Once you've got your colors down, lay your ball chain in and roll it back and forth a little bit to get the, the whole surface area covered. Now, I decided to lay down a little bit of silver on my base coat where I was going to put my rainbow chain pull, just because I thought it might help the colors to stand out a little bit more from the background. Sometimes black has a habit of eating up color or leaving it looking too dull and dark once the paint is dry. So my first pull didn't go quite as I had planned. As you can see, not very much color is picking up over top of the silver, but that's okay. With chain pulls, you can uh, definitely pull again if it's not turning out the way you like the first time. Now, another little pro tip is to do what I just did. That's a little children's uh, medicine syringe, and I use that to suck up some of the extra paint that gets pulled to the top of the feather when you do your chain pull. This will keep you from ending up with a really thick layer of paint at the top of the feather, especially if you have to do your chain pull more than once. Now I've cleaned my chain by dipping it into some water and wiping it with a paper towel and then I've put it back into my rainbow colored mixture that you saw me lay out in the beginning. Now I've laid it back down uh, trying my best to line up the rainbow so that it's laying in the same spot as it was uh, when I pulled the first time. Now you can see I'm definitely getting a lot more color showing up this time. I'm using my little syringe again to pick up the excess paint at the top before I pull the second side. I also like to hold the ball chain right at the top to make sure that it doesn't move as I get close to the top of the feather. If it pulls out of place, that can sometimes make the top a little messy.
Now I'm using my chain that I haven't cleaned to just starting at the top, drag down through the feather to create your center line and your bottom or quill portion of your feather. And it's not showing up too much, so I've pulled again here, but I'm still not getting the bottom of the feather to show up as much as I'd like. So I tried adding a little bit of silver. And pulling through, hoping that it would make the bottom show up more, which it did, although it left the center line of my feather a little bit messy. I'm trying to straighten that out now, but I'm not really loving the way that it's looking messy down at the bottom there, so I decide to do my rainbow pull one last time. So again, I cleaned my chain, dipped back into my rainbow paint mixture, uh, lining up my colors so that they're laying in the same spot, and I'm pulling one last time. It's nice to know if you haven't done this before as well that you don't have to get it right the first time. You can definitely pull a few times till you get the look that you're going for. Now, because I've pulled so many times, I've pulled most of my silver to the top, and the edges of my feather have gotten pretty dark and not visible, so I'm just taking my chain and I'm dipping it in silver, and I'm using it to outline the edges of the feather. I ended up liking the way this looked because the top of the feather and the quill of the feather were both silver and I had a little silver outline around the edges that kind of enhanced that look. Now I'm just using my ball chain to draw some of the little fluffy bits at the base of the feather. You could use a palette knife for this as well, and I often do. This time I decided to use the end of the ball chain just because I thought it might make it a little bit more visible where things tend to sometimes show up a little bit less on a very dark or black background. Now I've just grabbed um, a little wooden skewer that I had and I'm doing a bit more uh, sort of little swipes at the edges to make the line look a little less solid and a little more feathery. And at this point now I'm going to torch just in case there's any air bubbles hiding in the paint, but you don't tend to get a lot with this technique. You can also torch at the beginning right after you lay down your base color if you find that you have a lot of bubbles in it. So after I've looked at my finished feather for a few minutes, I'm deciding that it's giving me kind of a spacey vibe, like a galactic feather. So I've decided to add little spatters. Um, oh, and I guess I decided to add a silver center line as well. And yeah, I decided to add um, little spatters of each color of paint to the background. So to do this, you just grab a brush and start with any color you like, dip it in and start tapping it against your finger, or your hand, sorry, this will give you little spatters. Um, I tried a couple different styles of brushes to see which worked best. In general, you want um, a fairly stiff brush. You don't want to have your paint on there 
too thick when you start tapping it on your hand or else you're going to get little spatter lines or spots that are kind of too thick. So I just go through each color. Uh, I'm speeding it up a little bit and cutting out some of the colors so it's not too boring for you guys. But I did do spatters of each color, so the magenta, the copper, the gold, the metallic green, the turquoise, and the dioxys in purple. And here it is. So I hope you guys like it and that you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful to you. Uh, let me know what you think of it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. If you can, uh, definitely subscribe. That helps me to be able to keep making these videos and tutorials. And just, yeah, thank you so much for watching.